What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We hope you're still living, loving, and breathing sports. Welcome to Double Coverage. I'm Dom, and I'm with the great man, Sauce. What is happening, mate? How are you, Doma? You Good, know mate. what? We are. We're on the precipice of the NBA playoffs. Massive, massive. So we're bringing the special pod. So special pod, we're just going to cover the first round of the playoffs as uh, Portland secured that last spot with the play-in win against Memphis this morning. So, yeah, we're going to just run through the first round, give us give our picks. We've done our brackets. We've finalized them. But we're going to bring them to you slowly, slowly over the socials throughout each round, uh, revealing who we picked. And, uh, yeah. Where we went right we and happen. wrong. Yeah. And uh, I think there could be a bit of a debate today on a few things. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it, it's been awesome. I'm just so happy that it's come around and we got the season back up and running and we actually got playoffs this year. So it's awesome, something to look forward to. So Yeah, yeah. good stuff, mate. It's, um, it's what we've been waiting for. You know, we got through these bubble games. We sorted these things out. Um, credit to the NBA. All reports, the way they've set up this whole bubble has been elite. Um, yeah, and here we are. Portland got the W this morning, so they're in the playoffs. Grizzlies, unfortunate. Ja Morant did show that he is going to be a star of the future, potentially in their you know really first meaningful game to to, to get into the playoffs. The guy did go off. I think he had thirty six points and, and yeah, played really well. Most definitely the best player for the Grizzlies. Yeah, but Dame Dollar, Dame Time. <laughs> Same time. Put, he's, he's literally just put put them on our put them on his back and just brought them to bring the playoffs. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's been other guys that have stepped up and, and CJ's played, been really good. McCollum played really, 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 really well this week. Uh, throughout the whole week, I mean, the guy's playing with a fractured back. Yeah. So, yeah, credit to that guy. He's he, he's battling through, and yeah. <clears throat> Let's Mello, kick it off. mallow has been good. But we'll start with the East, man. We'll, we'll just start with the first round playoffs. We'll go through each one, give our prediction, give our thoughts, and uh, debate if we have to debate it. But, uh, yeah, the top. first, we've got Milwaukee, Orlando. Literally, I made some notes here. I literally put uh, two notes. Sweep, Orlando will get slapped. That, that, <laughs> that's a literally... <laughs> The two notes that I put for that first round. Yeah, Sweet look. And slapped, really, so. Yeah, as, as good as Orlando has been, I mean.
potentially a team that could give Miami some trouble. And don't forget that Miami's quite young. So they've got a quite a few young guys on there, um, first playoff experience. But I just see Miami as a whole. They've pretty much got yeah. their whole team. I don't think they have any injuries. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dommer. Yeah, well, yeah, they do. They have one, uh, who's, which who's, Derek Jones Jr. got stretched it off, actually. Right. In that, so I think it was like a neck contusion. So I don't know if he's... Uh, there was like, I think, inflammation around potentially uh, a muscle there or a vertebrae. So they're taking that very cautiously. He's, okay. he's been really good. He's been a good revelation this year. Every, everyone thought, oh, he's just a dunker. He's just a dunker. But he's proven that he can shoot the ball and really get in the lane. And well, I like some highlights from him as well with those big dunks that he puts on. But they're, they're practically... They haven't got Derek Jones Jr. Miami, but then in the same sense, Indiana doesn't have Demana Sabonis. So really, yeah, they're, they're missing a of, twenty and ten guy. And we spoke about this. Yeah. Um, well, Indiana's bubble. Yeah, Indiana's guy that they're missing is a lot more valuable to the team than what Derek Jones Jr.'s impact, in my opinion, because like you said, twenty and ten guy, man, yeah. he's got Look, massive impact. Derek Jones Jr. averaging uh, twenty minutes on the year. I'm giving you eight points off the bench, shooting three around about 30%, so serviceable. I think he's yeah. more in there for his defense because he's, he's a nice size and he, you can throw him at the better guys on the other team and not yeah. use your best player, Jimmy Buckets, to waste so much of his energy on the defensive end. Like, obviously, we yeah. know Jimmy plays both ways. That's just fact. But you need Jimmy Buckets to... You know, you need him to start getting 25 a night. Like, Yeah, 100%. The, and the whole that's, 7, 16, 17 thing, he probably has to up that now. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is the playoffs. This is where you, This is where I think Jimmy Buckets, he lives for these moments, and he'll come up big, man. And I expect him at times if TJ gets going, like he has in the bubble games, I expect Butler to, to get in his face. Right yeah. and and make it hard for him and and it will really show what sort of where TJ Warren's game has come or where it's at. You know, has has he yeah. taken a step to the next level or has he just been able to put together a good stretch? But when yeah. the tough, you know, when the tough times come, can he tough it out and push through and yeah. continue and, and to what, serve like his we, team? Yeah, like we said, he's done really well, uh, MJ. Uh, throughout the whole bubble. No, it's MJ. It's always MJ to us now. But literally, he's done really well in the bubble. And But literally, for all the pundits out there that are like, oh, he's this good, he's that good. And like you said uh, last week on the pod, uh, mate, he's been in the league already five years. There's a reason why. You know what I mean? His consistency. For the pundits now, yeah, they've made all these big calls that he's going to be this big impact. It's put up or shut up now. Really, it is. So... Uh, the pundits you watch it if he if he gets locked down and he gets like owned practically owned by buckets they're going to come out and say oh yeah but you know he's inconsistent you everyone always backtrack backtracks and stuff because they can't take onus on their opinion we've said it he's vulnerable there's a reason why he's been in the leagues for so long and he's only dominated now like he's got inconsistencies he's had big games before but can he maintain it like we saw in the last two games against Miami like well, I don't think I don't think he played actually the last one, but the one before. Yeah, buckets didn't play the last game. No, yeah, but he got destroyed in that game. You can't have twelve points at half time and then come out in the second half and not hit one point if you're this the man in the team. So we'll see yeah. what happens. I've gone for this this one I've gone six. I reckon it's gonna go six. I reckon um Indiana's gonna take a couple. I've uh, gone the, Miami in six as well. Yeah, the the only thing Really, with Miami is the whole. If one shooter's down, they've got three other guys that can hit buckets. You know yeah. what I mean? That, and that's and that's a good thing to have in a, and in a shooting. League. Tyler Hero is showing that he, he's the real deal. Like, yeah, you see the way he doesn't just you know when you came in the league, you thought he was just a catch and shoot guy, but he is much more than a catch and shoot guy. Like this guy is you know off using the ball screens. Uh, crossing over, pulling out for three, then, you know, doing same moves, crossing over, back behind the back, you know, driving on his left and finishing at the ring on the opposite side of the ring with his right hand. 
the guy has so much talent and he's only in his first year where he's only 20 yeah. years old. There's so much upside and, for that, man. And, and, and that's the po- like we said, the positive thing about Miami is they've got their two guys that they're building around now. Like they got Bam is the guy to kick it out and Butler's the leader. It's his team. And they've literally just surrounded everyone with shooters. Like Pat Riley's done a great job there. Uh, along with uh, Spolstra. But we'll yeah. see what happens. I'm going and don't forget their defense six, is so. good. You know, yeah, ninth they're... in the league in defense, yeah. which is higher than Indiana. And their offensive rating is also higher than Indiana. So, I mean, you take Sabonis out, you're losing a 20 and 10 guy. You're also losing a guy who averaged five assists on the season. That is a lot to take out, man. Yeah. That is so and, much. You yeah. know, he's averaging 20, 10, and five assists. I just That's can't massive. see it. Like, and, 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 and the season matchups, yeah, Indiana's only beat them once this year. And it was the last game when Miami pretty much arrested all their guys. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Miami in six. Miami in six. Time? I'm going Miami in six. Uh, next one is like doing my bracket. I don't know if you had the same issue, but this one, Boston versus Philly, is, I tell you what. I don't know. It's actually hard. I understand we're like, oh, yeah, but they haven't got Simmons, uh, Philly. But I don't know. Like, I've gone Boston overall, but my theory behind it, I don't know if you feel the same, but if Tatum doesn't play good, Boston stink it up. I know they've got uh, Brown and Haywood, but that's been the recurring theme for the Boston Celtics. If Tatum's not shooting 20-plus a night, they just struggle. But when Tatum shoots big, everyone else just rides the coattails too and they all play well together and I don't know about Kemba Kemba looks like he's in just this I don't know he's like this monotonous play where he's just going through the motions is he going to like explode in this series and actually play some Kemba basketball is he still underdone I don't uh, he just doesn't look himself in my opinion yeah it's a tough one mate I, I don't know it's a tough one in Boston man and they've got so much talent Brad Stevens he's a great coach I've gone Boston in six because I think Philly's definitely still good enough to get some games. And, you know, yeah. this is where Joel and B needs to show that he is the man and start averaging 30, 32, 35 a night in these playoffs. Um, the guy's too big, too skillful. I mean, he's going to be guarded by Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice. And Ennis Cantor. And, and Ennis Cantor. Cantor. Like, this guy should eat them for breakfast. You know, he should be just backing him down, shacking him. He's got the little floater hook. He's got the turnaround jumper. He's got all the moves in the, in, in the, in the bag. They just got to surround him with more shooters and just keep the lane open for him. And it, it's really his game to dominate. So, yeah, 100%. If he, if he but, puts on a clinic, there could be an upset on the cards, potentially, yeah. if B dominates. Because they've got Tobias Harris as well. He's a good player. And Jay Rich, like they're good, like those guys. And I know Horford's coming off the bench. There's been a few, a few things with Horford, um, like coming out in the media about probably getting rid of him. We can address that uh, during the podcast during the week. But I don't know. Horford off the bench is he's been all right now. Like he just had those few games to settle in, and that's another big guy that they can use. I guess it all comes down to their three point shooting, Philly. Like those guys, like Shake Milton. Um, Shake Milton, Jay Rich, uh, these guys, and Tobias Harris, they need to be able to hit their shots. Mike Scott, like if they go cold, Boston will just, I reckon they'll just destroy them. Because the plan is, as we've seen, they're going to try and get MB to back down the big guys, but then bring the double. So then he settles for uh, fadeaway jumpers instead of going to the ring yeah. and dominating in, like, Which right is under the basket. What I'm, cr- I'm critical of Joel and B doing too often. He's, happy, yeah. he's too happy to just take those jumpers when, especially early on in games, just assert your dominance, man. You're Good an absolute boy. unit in there. Like, use your size, especially at early parts of the game. So, I mean, I don't understand why he doesn't do that more. But on the flip side, man, I'll, I'll just, I just looked into to Kemba's numbers, yeah? So, the guy's down five points uh, from last year, but he's also down five field goals attempts. So he's actually shooting the ball less, um, which is going to affect your 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 points average. What's his assist like? Uh, so his assist his assists are down. 
which is probably somewhere that he could he could he could uh, improve a bit on the on the season, but yeah. Yeah, like going into the playoffs. But yeah, I, I think I'm with you, man. I think I don't know. It seems as though Boston has decided to put the, the team on on uh, Tatum's back. That's and fine. he's the main guy, which is fine because I think, you know, every team needs yeah. a main guy because when it comes down to crunch time, you, you need to choose who's going to have that shot. Um, and, and, you know, if Tatum's the guy, Tatum's the guy, maybe a different night, Kemba's hot, Kemba might be the guy. But, you know, you get the gist that he's, overall someone's got to be the guy. And, and Tatum has raised his level of play this season to prove yeah, that he oh, can be the guy, anyways. right? Yeah. And it... I think this is where I don't know because in his first year, he showed that he can carry this through the playoffs. So I'm more than confident that he can do it, but still we don't know because he's only in his third season. So yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, I've just got, the end, main yeah. reason I've gone with Boston Donna is because Ben Simmons is injured. And like, I just think that's such a big out that you can't but, cover yeah. that. And if Ben Simmons I'm, was healthy, I'm, I'm telling you, I would have really. picked Philly. I'll tell you what I would have done. Like I said, if, if Ben Simmons was healthy and they were playing good ball, I would have picked them in the first round. I would have picked them to beat either Brooklyn, Toronto in the second round, and they could have beat Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Well, we like, called it. They were, they were our smoky. I mean... They could have. They yeah. genuinely could have. But the whole thing with Kemba as a player, I understand he was injured and whatever he's had. If he asserts his dominance early in this series or in the playoffs, that adds an extra dimension of threat for any other team in the East because then all of a sudden teams are like, do we have to give the double team to Kemba? And then they've got Tatum, Haywood and Jalen Brown as threats. You know what I mean? They can be one of those teams. If you double team one guy, they still got three other guys that can kill you in a game. So I want Kemba, uh, Kemba sorry, to get out of this bloody funk that he's in and really try and play some of his best ball that he was playing at Charlotte. Because if he does that, man, like they could easily get through the second round and literally it's a toss up in the yeah, I mean, conference. I'm just having a look through Kemba's I'm just having a look through Kemba's like stats and uh, against Philadelphia this season. Um, like I mean the first game they played him in the first game of the season, that's a bit of an anomaly. It's his first game with the team sort of pulling yeah. out things. Yeah, he didn't play very well. But, um, you know, they lost. They, did, they, they didn't play too well. But the next two times when they burst them, I mean, he put up some good stat lines. Yeah, he, he's 29 points, um, eight assists um, oh, in the first meeting. And in the second meeting, he's 26 points, um, three assists. And, yeah, I, I think both those times they lost. So... Well, Philly's only Philly's only beaten. Uh, sorry, Boston's only beaten Philly once out of the four games that they played against each other. But they were all before the bubble, right? And Ben Simmons did play. Yeah, so that's that's where we, that's where this big this series takes that turning point. You know, Ben Simmons being out is such a huge out. As you've seen, you know, the previous meetings, he was able to 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 help Philly get the win, and him being out, man, that's just really going to hurt their yeah. chances. They're really, really uh, going to hurt their chances. We will see what happens there. That is literally a toss-up. I've gone Boston 6. You've gone Boston 6. Uh, we'll just see what happens, man, how it plays out. And, like, we'll comment on it as it happens, I guess. So, yeah, so that's that series. And then we'll go to the last matchup in um, the East, and that is Toronto versus Brooklyn. Uh, I made notes again. i tell you what, I didn't put uh, sweep next to this one because I'll give Brooklyn this. They have come into the bubble. Uh, I might talk about it on Wednesday because i tell you what, like Kyrie, KD and Spencer Dibwitty, like those three guys were like, all, like Durant said he wasn't healthy. I understand Kyrie didn't want to play because of other issues, like social issues that he's really um, got an impact on in society, which is fine but also because of the virus. And then we didn't want to play because of the virus. But then I see videos of them playing pickup ball together anyway with a whole bunch of other guys during the week. So anyway, it, ma- it, ma- it makes me feel like if I was a teammate of them, I'm in the bubble busting my ass. 
and they're playing good ball, Brooklyn. Like for the for the caliber of players that they have, they're playing good ball. Like they're Karis missing Levert a lot of players. A gun, bro. Karis Levert is the hidden gem in that team. Like he's another guy. Like when KD and Kyrie are playing, like whoa, man, I tell you, next season they're going to be good. We know they're going to be good. They could have been good this year. Who knows? If KD and Kyrie play, they probably beat Toronto in the first round. For sure. Like, but I've gone Toronto in five. I'm giving Brooklyn one game because, you know, they get hot. They don't miss, man. Like, they put up some big They've numbers, got some good so. three-point shooters. I mean, Joe yeah. Harris is a good three-point three shooter. Um, yeah. We've, we've seen uh, in that last game against Portland, they pushed them right to the end. Karis LeVert, the man's got talent. Oh, I mean, these guys, they're NBA basketballers, yeah. They're going to have pride. And they're going to go out there and give it their all. I could see potentially Brooklyn pinching a game or two. I've got uh, Toronto to take it out 4 2. You can't ignore Toronto's form. Second in the East on the standings on the season. Their form throughout the bubble has been, you know, really good. They've had some down moments, but, you know, that's NBA and that's basketball. That is basketball, yep. I just think over the seven games, they've got the better side once again. You know, I can't stress this enough. The team that's more consistent over the seven games is going to get the job done. Toronto has yeah. shown me over how many games they've played this season, 65 or 66 games, yeah. that they are consistent. And they've got good vets, man. Good vets, yeah. good young guys, like Spicy P. Like, they've got some good players on that team. Norman Powell off the bench. Like I mean, got OG Ananobi yeah. has probably OG, stepped yeah. up his game to another yeah. level this season. Yeah. So, so, man, I think Toronto gets this one. I, I won't think it through, through too much. Brooklyn's outs are potentially the thing that's lost them this year. That's costing them. That's, yeah, you know, it, it if Corey steps in there and even Spencer Dinwiddie, there's a chance they still win this series without Kate. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Right? 100% they do. Man. DeAndre Jordan's another guy that's not playing. Yeah. That's another big guy. Like, they're missing. Like, people are sleeping on Brooklyn. At the, I understand, like, they kind of know, oh, yeah, they're missing all these stars. But next year, when we start going into next year's season review... They're going like, to be top three, dog. Them. They're going to be good. They're going to be gonna good. Be, they're missing four of their best players. Yeah. Four of their probably top five, top six best players are there. Like, and one of those... Oh, sorry, are missing. Only one of them's there, and that's Karis LeVert. Yeah. So yep. we'll see what happens, how the system goes. Obviously, they're going to play a lot different, like a different style of basketball next year as they're going to play through Kyrie and KD, not through Karis LeVert. But we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I've got them in five five games. Toronto 4-1, you've got them 4-2. So interesting. We'll see what happens there. Uh, now All right, onto, onto the West, baby. I tell you, this is um, the West extremely is tough. hard. The West is tough. Uh, our first game is Lakers Portland. Uh, wow, I, I don't. I, this was so hard. I could have easily gone Portland winning this series, but I've, I've backed in the Lakers because I tell you what, don't write off champions. We do it every single year, except for last year where LeBron didn't try. You know how LeBron is the most passive guy I reckon I've ever seen in the NBA. He didn't want those guys there. He wanted Anthony Davis last season. So he just... And, he, and plus, he was injured. But he, he didn't want to play with that team in the playoffs because he didn't want to get embarrassed. He'd rather not make it. I know how he... like We all know how he thinks and people give him shit for that. And that's fine. But it's a whole different ball game now. Like You know what he's going to bring to the first round. If Lillard comes out and dominates, you know how LeBron is. He's passive. Like... He hates when people in any series or in any game bag him and say, oh, Lillard's got the crown now. Lillard's the king. You watch, you watch Portland take a game, even if it's the first one, and everyone bags LeBron. And we've seen it time and time and time again. LeBron will come out in the second game, drop 40, or dominate with a triple-double with high assists and literally will the Lakers over the line. And everyone goes, oh, wow, this guy's still got it. It's year 17. Man, it's 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 literally a broken record. It is a yeah, broken is. record every year. Just shut up. He's the best. He's the best player, unless you live through Michael Jordan's era. He's the best player you have ever seen. Full stop. 
don't talk about KD. Don't talk about Kawhi. I don't care about Steph. I don't care about Harden. I don't care about our boy West Brick. I don't care about any of those guys. He's the best player. Unless you watch Jordan play, he's the best player you have ever seen play in your life. Just appreciate it. That's it. Just appreciate what he is. Sustained like he, excellence. He, he is not the problem. As we said last week, the problem in this series is Anthony Davis and the bench. And the that role players it. being able to make shots. That is it. Literally. You're a Lakers I mean, man. Yeah. And I'm excited for this series. Yeah, I'm, we're I'm excited. You know, I've got Lakers winning it uh, 4-2. I think Portland can get some games. The thing what's, you know, I, I was a bit worried going in. And I'm still a little bit worried. I would be worried but, too, man. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Portland are on a good side. But, I mean, I watched them against the Nets. They gave up like 102 points through three quarters to the Nets, a team without, as we spoke about, four of their best players, three of their best players, let's just say. And they've given up 102 points through three quarters. Now, albeit, one thing I will say about the Lakers is their defense, is, albeit it has been up to the standard in the bubble, their defense prior to that has been really good. So if we can get back to playing some of that defense where we can get stops, get out and run, man, I just don't think Portland have enough on the defensive end to, yeah. to lock down. I mean, the Lakers haven't been shooting it well. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to LeBron being able to get to the lane, and he, he'll, he'll be smart about it. You know, he'll get Nurkic in foul trouble. He'll get some of those, one of those bigs, either Nurkic or right side in, in foul trouble so that they can't play them together so that it opens him up in the lane so that they're only, he's only and competing then, against one of them. And the that ring. also then transitions and helps Davis. That tra- that's exactly right. So, man, oh, I don't know where I sit with this. I think Damian Lillard's going to average like 35 points this series. The guy's going to go off. Who we roll through there on him, KCP is going to get first crack, I would believe. But everyone's going to have to have a shot at this guy. He's yeah. on an absolute streak at the moment. I don't know what we can do to stop him. I mean, My, if Avery I was actually, Bradley was there, I would say Avery's our yeah. man. He's not there. Yeah. So Rondo, I don't, he's Rondo, old. I don't Rondo's know. actually stepped yeah. red on the socials window. that he's uh, in the bubble. So he's at yeah, the yeah. resort. Yeah, yeah. So, he's just getting his hand right. And then he will play, whether it's the first round or the second. If Lakers can get through it, he will play at some stage. But my thought was, and I was going to bounce it off of you, clearly, uh, why don't they just let Lillard cut loose, yeah? Like, not cut loose and let him just shoot 60. Like, you play D on him, but you know he's going to score. I think the guys that they need to shut down, like, you've got to shut down CJ McCollum because you, you just don't want guys like Mallow and CJ and even, like, even Gary Trent Jr., as he's shown in the bowl, he can shoot the three and he's shooting it at a really high percentage. But if you let CJ and Mallow, instead of adding 26 or 29, if you can shut them down and they're just adding like 16 or 18 points, that's enough to yeah. beat them. I mean, because it's, Lillard, then it forces Lillard to take more shots at a higher volume. And if you can guard that and you're forcing him to try and shoot 16 a game to win, the odds of them winning are not very high. Yeah, it's a tough one. Like it is. It's going to depend like, on how he's going. You know, if he's going hot, of course we're going to have to try double team and get the ball out of his hands. If he's if he's not so hot, like it's 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 hard, man. Like Lillard's Brooklyn, a beast. Brooklyn, so see, Brooklyn did play it well in that second half in the they last did. game. They just brought the double to him as soon as he crossed half court. They brought the double to him, forced the ball out of his hands, and made everyone else on that team accountable for making the shots. And as we saw on a few possessions, like Mallow missed a big clutch three to win the game. Uh, Gary Trent had like, off, they got three offensive rebounds in, in one possession. Gary Trent missed two wide open threes. Like this was like, to seal it, man, make the other guys accountable. That's what the Lakers have to do. But on the flip side, we all say, we, we're saying as much as we can about this, but like you said, Sauce, on the flip side, those role players and bench players and stuff for Lakers need to still hit the shots. Oh, they <laughs> like, need to step up. Kuzma yeah, needs no. to keep going on the trajectory. Yeah, he's like, been going in this bubble. Like, he needs to keep up that play. 
Um, and then for the other guys, we need them to step up, man. We need them to be hitting shots. We need Danny De Green to be dropping those threes. He's, he's been getting, you know, he, he's shooting coming into the ball, like, you know, through the bubble and leading into the playoffs has been terrible, except for essentially the last game or the second last game where we finally got a win. I don't know where his shooting went, but one no. thing I do have belief in is the guy's a shooter. And shooters keep shooter. shooting. The guy's going to keep passing the ball. And, you know, it's going to turn. It's going to turn like, you know, we don't, you don't win that many games and finish top C for, for no reason. And once again, you know, we've got LeBron. And in these bubble games, he was trying to get the chemistry. I can't stress this enough. I watched every single Lakers game. The guy was trying to get the chemistry. He's trying to get his guys shots. He knows that their shoot, shooting isn't there. He's trying to, you know, get the get the the rhythm, you know, rhythm, the rhythm. Back, that's really. right. Yeah. He's trying to get the rhythm back within the team, especially without got, Avery yeah. being there and Rondo not being there. I mean, you got to remember, Rondo's a miss because he leads that second unit. I know, with Anthony I know. Davis. As as Him and Anthony Davis and lead that but... second unit. You know, yeah. Rondo's so smart. He knows exactly where, what plays are being called. He, he, he's like an encyclopedia of the guy with his basketball knowledge. You know, it's been reported that he could, he's going to potentially transition to coaching post his career because he's that smart of a basketball mind. So... And I'm with you on the chemistry. Honestly, the, like, the ideology behind it is why, if you've got three-point shooters... Oh, yeah, but they're missing their shots. Stop taking the threes. All right, so what? We're going to just tell them start taking mid-range jump shots. The it's not players. the NBA these like, days. You've got to keep yeah, shooting. I know. Like, like you get those open just... shots. If LeBron's getting double teamed into the lane, of course he's going to pass it out. Man, because LeBron, that's a wide basketball play. They were missing. Like, the Lakers, yeah. Like, I watched them as well. But, like, the Lakers were missing open shots. But they had shots. You know, like, open shots. To they hit. were wide just, open. In one game, I think when Anthony Davis went for twelve points and we lost in during the bubble, he had like four wide open threes in the, in the second yeah, half. This is the thing where this is the most frustrating thing with the media with this narrative, and it always happens because it's a LeBron team. If it was any other team, like come on, man, it just gets brushed over and hardly talked about. But because it's a LeBron team, I completely understand it. That's fine. You want to scrutinize the bloke, and that's fine. Like you all regret it once he retires. I can just tell you that much. But that's. A story for another day, but honestly, just give him give him time. LeBron was like, like you said, and like I said before, he's so passive. He was literally just like, "We want you to shoot the ball." So he was just getting guys open every single time. And the way they're talking about, oh, they're taking heaps of threes in this. They're talking as if like I understand it sounds bad because they're missing wide open threes, but the threes they were missing were wide open. It's not like they're all contested threes. Yeah, they were that good to get open. All they need to do is hit them and they blow away every team that they played. They just blow them away. They kill them. And everyone's like Avery Bradley. So what are you saying? Like a Avery Bradley would just hit eight threes a game. That's the way they're talking. Like, Avery no, Bradley would miss mostly like, yeah, on, the end, on, the, on the defensive end. On the, on the three, offensive on the, end, he was good. Don't be wrong. Yeah, he he chips in with his bit. But it's, it's the defensive end thing. that we miss him because now what's going to happen when we come up against the better sides, LeBron's going to have to play the main guy you know he's going to have to pick up the guys yeah. he's going to have to on the defensive end he's potentially going to be picking up mallow you know mallow ain't no slouch no um whereas previously when we had bradley bradley would pick up the Kawhi, or bradley would pick up um pg would come up against them or bradley would you know be able to roll through lillard and and switch with kcp and same with uh mallow you know you'd be able to uh, throw bradley at him. just you know we're not saying that we will want LeBron to play no defense, but now he's going to have to step it up and take yeah, take more of a, a defensive role, and which is could potentially hurt the offense. But once again, I'm not going to doubt the man until he proves me otherwise, and that's exactly. that's where I and sit with it, and, and that's how everyone should take it. Yeah. So I'm going like you said, you're going four two Lakers. I also went four two Lakers to win it in six. Next matchup, uh, our favorite team in the bubble. Uh, the Houston Rockets against Oklahoma City. So, yeah, this is a great matchup. Uh, Westbrook's missing the first two games with injury. So, I don't know how much of a miss that is, really. Not a good start. Uh, I'll just let you know. 
I'm putting my, my money where my mouth is. The biggest call, Oklahoma is winning this in six. I don't six. care in six. They are winning in six. Man, Oklahoma, they've played each other three times this season. Oklahoma has beat twice of the three times. Okay. Uh, they've had... Man, I've, I've listened to the... Uh, man, I don't know. They've got a spread of contributors in that team. They've got point guard, Chris Paul. They've got SGA, who's playing really well. They've got uh, guys like Steven Adams to get him O-boards, to get him second chance points. They've got Gallo. Like... Me, trust me, like, this is the this is the thing now. Yeah, like I understand Houston. Like they, well, they beat Davis throughout the bubble, and but they had problems against Utah with Gobert and like got like big guys that like that are really like dogs. Physical. They're like dogs in the paint, man. Physical. Yeah. And Stephen Adams, he's not going to let no PJ Tucker and Robert Covington and yeah. James Hart and little guards push him around, man. That's Aquaman. That's the Aquaman lookalike. He ain't getting pushed around. <laughs> Stephen Adams. Come on, man. He's Kiwi. Yeah, he's a monster he's inside, man. He, he's he's bugs, a bully. bro. He doesn't care. I'm going bang here, sauce. Oklahoma, mate. I want to see this elite defense. That's what I want to see from Houston, this elite defense. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Shut me up, Houston fans. Look, Shut me up. I've, I want to see it. Doma, look, I can see where your points are going, but I've just had to flip here, and I've gone Houston to win it in seven. Now, Ooh. I think they have enough to get through this round. Um, I've gone, I've gone in seven because I potentially see them losing one of the first two games where West Brick isn't there. Um, he will help them when he when he comes back. Look, I call him West Brick. If he is going to help. Win. If anything, they'll win the first two games when he isn't there. And he then they'll lose there. by the four when he comes back. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I actually just think, man, I just think Harden needs to look at this like, if he gets knocked out here in the first round against OKC, who at the start of the year, no one had them even making the playoffs, right? Yeah. Yeah. How's that going to look on him? You know, Man, there's, sto- but there's stories within stories within this game. I'm telling you right now, like Westbrook, obviously former OKC player, yeah. Chris Paul, former teammate of James Harden, yeah. Man, these like these guys, like the whole franchise and Chris Paul are playing with the biggest chip on their shoulder. They've got something to prove in this series because, like, Westbrook wanted to leave because he wanted to win titles, so. It was a bit of a slap in the face to Oklahoma. That's how they took it. Man, the biggest slap in the face was to Chris Paul. Like, and like, let's get rid of him for Westbrook. Let's ship him off. When we can single-handedly say, like, Chris Paul, that injury in that Western Conference Finals against yeah. uh, Golden State, if that didn't happen... They would have made the finals, the man, potentially. That was the difference. Chris Paul was the difference. He was. And the thing that I'm looking at He was is, on fire in that series. He was like, yeah, like oh. seven points or something. He was, he was dominating. It, He's got a chip on his shoulder to shut up everyone in that Houston organization and prove that it can be done like as a veteran with some young guys and literally he's been guiding them. Like SGA, man, has had an awesome uh, season having a guy like Chris Paul to just chew to him and teach him things about the game that he probably... I'll tell you what, he's not getting that from Westbrook, yeah? If Westbrook's going to teach her, oh, yeah, man, well, there's uh, 10 seconds left, you know, I'm getting triple team, you just jack up the three every freaking time and just miss it. That's not how it works, man. <laughs> no, no. But honestly, I reckon this is going to be an awesome series. And this is the first playoff series Houston is playing without a legitimate big man. Don't forget that. Yeah. Don't sleep on- and I, I've said this is my point. I sent you a video the other day where Robin Covington was guarding Tobias Harris in the post. And Tobias Harris backed him all the way down to under the ring and dunked on him. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, only, I'm literally only going with Houston because of James Harden. I just think James Harden's going to do something special. He's going to be averaging 50 yeah. in this series or something stupid like that. Yeah, probably. But I'm not confident, man. And that's why I've gone with seven, because I think it's gonna if they're gonna win, it's gonna take seven games. 
I can't see them like winning in four or winning in five. No way. This is going to be a close series, ladies and gentlemen. Like closer than people think. Um, you know, West Bricks <laughs> out the first two games, so that's that's you know you're, you're missing your second best player. Oh, man, it's tough. Tough. And, this is going to be a good series. It is. Going I, to be a good I knew series. you would have to go with OKC because the way you've been putting it on Houston the last uh, few oh. weeks. So yeah, I was every- like, you know, he's going to go OKC. I'm going Houston, <laughs> and I'm only going on Harden's back. But yeah, <laughs> for the record, I actually don't see them if they get through this round. I don't see them getting through any rounds after that. But oh, we'll I see how know. we go. I, I'll tell you one thing though, but if Houston does win this series, my whole bracket's going to shit in the bed because I've got Lakers, <laughs> Oklahoma in the second round. <laughs> I just, just honestly, this is my plea to all you people in Houston, Texas, all of you supporters, shut me up. I want you to shut me up. That's what I want. I want you to show me this elite D. Show the elite defense. Up. There's me, no elite defense you what, when you've got no one to challenge what, at the ring. Mate. Course, I'll no tell you what. Over six foot oh. eleven. The roster. So I'll tell you what, this, I'll tell, if I'm right and Oklahoma win in six, I'll come on every single week and I'll let Houston fans know that they lost this first round. I, I promise you, I will not shut up about it. I will, this will be better than any team. I, I don't even care about the title. If Houston loses, it'll even be better. That's what Houston goes and does in the offseason because they, no. when they always lose in the playoffs, oh. they make heaps of changes. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do now? They're going to change the whole team to all their players under six foot and try and win it like that. I put all seven foot players in their team next. Well, come on, honestly, the man. Tell with his analytics, more threes win games. Yeah, I understand that. But, but need- defense wins in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Defense, defense wins, wins championships. Playoffs. Come on, shut me up, Houston. I dare you to. I dare you to. I'm baiting you. Come on. Let's go. Hey, fishing. I'm on your side, Houston. I'm on your fishing. side. I've got you guys in seven. Let's fish. I've got Harden going, averaging 45 to 50 points this series. The hey, man's going to have to go off. I'm the going Oklahoma. I'm fishing, and you know what I'm going to catch, Sauce? A big, fat 4-2 win by Oklahoma. That's what I'm catching, mate. That's my prediction. Get rid of Houston. I'm sick of listening to their crap. Defend it over rubbish. Anyway, let's right, go. The next he's fired up, ladies and gentlemen. He's I love fired. it. I love it. Denver, Utah, another good series. Man, the Great West series. Is stacked. Oh, it's going to be good. I'm excited for Jeez. this series, man. I, as I said, I speak highly of Denver. I like the team yeah. chemistry. I mean, it looks like I could be wrong with this Porter Jr. thing. I think, you know, <laughs> words are coming out that Malone is now confident in Porter Jr. It's playing so, I good. Mean, I think for yeah. them to take the next step, they need this guy firing. Whether he's coming off the bench or not, if he's coming off the bench and he can pitch him with 20 points a night, man, that's valuable. That is super he's got valuable. One. He's got um, one of the most think, beautiful jump shots. Oh. Yeah, man. And I think that could be where they get Utah. Um, I see I see their bench a lot better. I, see, I, I think their bench is better, man. Yeah. Well, than, than, not for anything. We... we <laughs> We kind of, like Utah have proven us wrong in a sense because we kind of wrote them off and said, oh, yeah, they won't do too well because they lost like Bogdanovich as a shooter and that's extra ammo, you know, like points per game to add to the team. But they've been solid. They're the epitome of a defensive team. Like they will literally gut like yeah. games out to get wins or even if they're losing, like they don't want to get smashed. Like they will gut it out. And Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell's played really well in the bubble. Like, he's done really well, done his job. Um, we'll see what happens with this. Like like you said, it could be the tale of two benches, really. Like, if Porter Jr. comes off the bench with that second unit, he can kill it, man. Like, if he keeps putting in, in the work, it's just... The I kid's talented. Let me just say, like, I've watched a few games. The kid's talented. Um. It's still a bit scrawny, so when they switch out things, you know, he's going to have a couple of mismatches in the sense that he, he, he's a bit easy to push around when he comes up against the big fellas. But, you know, who is it? His offensive talent is undeniable. Um, yeah, I, I just I just like Denver's team chemistry more. And, yeah. I, you know, with Jamal Murray coming back, um, he's got it back into the flow of things. 
You know, don't count this guy out. I think, you know, there's been games where he's gone for over 40. He can light it up. Jamal Murray's a good player. Good yeah, player. Jamal Murray's a good player. And he, he's, he's a great three-point shooter. Um, that's where the league's at at the moment, you know, yeah, spreading it, um, allowing more room. They use Jokic really well at the top uh, top of the key, at the high post, um, get a lot of ball movement off him. And and then, you know, don't forget, they've got Gary Harris coming back, who, who, who's uh, good at D. Um, you've got Tory Gregg, who's good at D. So I don't think they have the, the worst defensive uh, side. Um, no. Uh, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. But... They, they don't have the most, the best defensive rating overall, but um, that could potentially be just because Jokic isn't the most defensive force under the ring. No, but what yeah, he gives you on correct. the offensive end, that is another level in terms of his passing ability, um, his ability to shoot the three, his ability to even run the fast break, which we've seen many a time. You know, gets the rebound, goes end to end. And now makes the right play. Um, I, I just don't see where Utah has enough t- to get the job done over over. Yeah, the like, I may note that too. I just said like they don't have the firepower to potentially outshoot teams. But the good thing about playoffs is it is really defensive, and that to me is the only thing that can keep them in the series until they eventually lose. Like. That's right, so, my only thought with them. Yeah, like, so where I look at it, like I look at their team and I'm like, oh, you know, who's a guy who could go off for 40 in a game? Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell. That's like it. that's the only guy I look at. That's then it. I look at Denver's team. Who's a guy who could go off for 40? Well, Porter Jr.'s shown us that when the guy he gets can. hot, he can get hot. Like he scored 37. Murray um, can. Murray Jokic can definitely can. go off for 40. And Jokic can easily go off for 40. Or five. You know, he, a good night for him is 25 points with 15 assists. You know, the guy's a, a monster on, on on the assist level and passing the ball and making the right decision. So, yeah, I just see so much more variety in play with Denver. Um, Utah will make it tough for them. And Gobert's a, a strong force, you know, reigning defensive player of the year. So it's going to be hard for Jokic. But I just think Jokic has got, he's got too much talent, man. And... You know him slimming down. Yeah, it's definitely helped him. It's, it's going the to other thing, going to the yeah. The other thing with Denver as well. I don't know if a lot of people noticed Denver. I think it was in last three games, or maybe in the last two games. Um, they were still fighting for a spot there for that three, but they deliberately uh, rested all their stars in the fourth quarter to try and find different. Uh, like like you said, Malone was trying to find different. Um, lineups to run not towards end the game end of games really to run throughout games so he throughout would play games. Port, Porter Jr. with like Craig and all these guys like just just sampling things like he yeah. started Porter Jr. in a game he started him in the starting five like he's just sampling these little things and I think he may have worked it out like they started playing some really good ball uh, obviously when Murray did come back like he said that's just an added dimension to the team because he is a good player solid but the interesting thing about this is um, Denver's won all the games that they've played against Utah but every single game was literally six points or less they beat him in OT by two they beat him by three and then they beat him by six so well, literally that's why I've an, got Denver to win it in six mate because I think Utah can get some games points, they're really. not they're not a bad side because they make it scrappy on defense you know, they make no, it hard yeah. for you. And when you make it hard for someone on defense, even though you might not be having your offensive game going at the start or, you know, you might be a bit sluggish in the first half, because you're able to play that hard-nosed defense, you keep yourself in the game. You know, you keep yourself within six to ten points. And then that could potentially change in one run. You know, basketball's a game of runs. You see it all yeah. the time. You know, the team goes on a run, they call a timeout to try and stop the run. Like, that's where I think you can't have to can pinch some games. They'll, they'll stay in it and um, they'll make it a scrap. Uh, That's it. But once again, over the seven, Denver has not too much firepower and um, I expect Jokic to average 25, 8 and 5. Nice. So, yep, yeah, Denver in whatever I've got, 6 here, 4-2. Same as you. So, we'll go into our last matchup. Oh, this is a big the one. First round. I think you're going to be very surprised with what I picked here, to be honest. I think I'm not Do you want me to go first, Thomas? Yeah, you go first because I, I don't know. Uh, All right, I'm going. 
I'm going, obviously, yeah, I think this is the obvious choice, but I'm going Clippers in six. Uh, I yep. think Dallas definitely has enough talent, as they've shown. I mean, Luca is a monster. Um, Chris Stubbs is a monster. Yeah. To, to get some games, but I just think Clippers have a better squad. You've got to understand there's a couple of yeah. players on the Dallas Mavericks that are having career years. Tim Hardaway Jr., uh, Donnelly Finney, Finney Smith, I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, Finney Smith, yeah. Finney Smith. Both those guys are shooting career highs from the three-point line this season. So, I mean, when the playoffs come, are they able to keep that consistency that they've shown throughout? Because, you know, the, the heat's going to come on Luca. I think they're going to throw the double teams at him. You've got the most elite defenders, elite defender in the league, essentially, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Dean, you up. Man, it's going to be a good Jordan. series. It's going to be a good series. A really good series. Uh, I, it is going to be good. I've gone, obviously, the obvious. I've picked Clippers. I haven't sw- picked the sweep. I'm not that, sh- like, I haven't gone. I've actually got them just to win it in five. Gentlemen sweep. Win it in five. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can Dallas, see that. Dallas, Dallas, their D isn't great, but they just, like you said, they just put up numbers offensively. Yeah. But I really think this is, as as we always say, like, legends are made in playoffs, yeah? Like, the beginning of a legend or a superstar or, a, like, a superstar in the league. Elite. Doncic, this is his time here. Yeah. He, it's it's either going to go two ways, like you said. It's either he dominates and he carries the offensive load, or he gets found out in this series because he's not playing against guys that like that are able to like guard him, but he can still get his shots. He's going to have Kawhi on him at times, Paul George on him at times. He's going to have, and like you mentioned this in like. The very, very first podcast, you said that Doncic sucks a lot, and it's true, he does. How's he going to fare when they switch up and put Pat Beverly on him, and he's just like a little yeah. chihuahua, mate, and he's That's just right. biting at him all the time, just riling him up. They got so many guys to throw at him, you don't, and don't yeah. think that Pat Beverly ain't going to get up in his face. Like he's oh. going to get up in his face, and this is what I'm saying: playoffs is another level. Pat yeah. Beverly is a pest. He's going to get up in Doncic's face. He's going to get him pissed off. Um, Doncic just might start trying to do. Uh, silly stuff, you know, pull off a step back three in Beverly, Beverly's face, airball it, yeah, you know, and exactly. that's the beginning of a downfall within that game because Pat Beverly's Bev, gotten into yeah. his brain, gotten into his into his psyche. You know, I think this is He's the next for the, step yeah. for Luka Doncic is yeah. stop looking so much and just be able to do it just on go the court. Beast, like, really, just go, just, just, that's yeah. it. Just go beast mode. If you can't, if, you, if you're settling for jumpers and they're not working, Change a game, like, and he's a young kid and he knows what to do because offensively he's gifted. Yeah, I'd love to see him just be like, "All right, you're stopping me here. I'm going to change it to this facet of my game. I'm going to bully you to the ring. I'm going to force you to foul me. Like, do things like that." But, like you said, I, I genuinely reckon um, he'll show something in this. Like, I, I hope he does. Like, I really, really hope he does show something. But it's literally. Two outcomes. It's either he does show us something and we're like, man, this is the real deal. It's his first playoff series, so I'm not going to be too hard on him. But it's a learning curve too because the other thing is he's coming out against potentially the best assembled squad in the league. I know they're not the first seed in the, in the West, but the best assembled squad defensively and depth-wise. Like... Man, I'm telling you, he could really get found out. He could be shut down. And like, like you said, Pat Bev, man, he's looking for that Barry Plant real estate. That's that's what he. That's, that's the game he's playing. <laughs> he's trying he to plant himself him. inside Lucas' head. And, uh, that's what he does. That's what he does. And if you the bite, best. and and that's where you'll see it. if you bite and you crack it, man, and you retaliate to stuff like that, and you let him win, series is finished. Like. His, his main goal is to try and get Luca out of it and force Pazingas to do as much as he can as the big guy and then force those career guys like Hardaway and Finney Smith to do the offensive load or like to carry them. But I reckon Dallas will put up a fight, yeah? I'm not... Like, I'm writing them off in the fact that they can't beat Clippers. Like, surely not. Like, that's that's the Hail Mary win if they, if they beat them. Yeah. But I really... They'll be competitive in games. Like, I reckon it'll be close to certain points and then, I don't know... Like we said, we've seen Kawhi do it in the playoffs, man. If their teams are struggling, he just takes over the game. So, 
that's exactly right, Dom. And I'm going to go with the guy that has history. He's still in the prime of his career. You know, hey, if Luca comes out, dominates, and puts his team on the on his back and gets them through this series, hey, we're talking about Luca in a different light. You know, we're talking about yeah, at this point a potential uh, star of the league, face of the league in years to come. But you know what, stars of the league and faces of the leagues do? They win in playoffs. Yeah, right. He, he might. He, he probably won't win the series, but like we said, we're not going to hold that against him. No, we're not. Against and the I best just team, think, practically. Yeah, and I just think where he will get found out the most will be on the defensive end because oh, his defense yeah. isn't that. Is is well, I think he's worse than Harden. I'm pretty sure. So that's uh, not a good start. Yeah, I think I think he is. Yeah. So that's the next level of his game that needs to to come up. Um, you know, there's no excuse for him to be an average defender. You know, people get on uh, um, Steph Curry and Trey Young because they're average defenders, but the guys are so small. And with all the switching in NBA, you know, they get the mismatch. There's not much they can do, especially when they get switched out onto like a LeBron or, you know, even if they're playing Philly and they're switching out to a Tobias Harris, you can literally just turn around and shoot over you. It's difficult. But when you're Lucas height, what is he six foot ten or six foot nine or something like that? So he's a he's a decent height, and he's a big unit. He's not he's not like a he's, a he's six foot seven, right? So he's that's the same that's the same either. height as Kawhi Leonard, exact yeah. same height. When you're that height, you need to be able to defend multiple positions. You need to be able to defend from uh, the one to the four, at least. Doncic shows that when he gets put onto the uh, to the guards, I mean he's playing point. His perimeter defense is, you know, lax. Um, it does. And I just think that's that's the side of the ball that not only Doncic will get found out, but just the whole Dallas Mavericks organization because their defense yeah. is just horrendous. And and that's not. I don't know how many more times I can say it, but defense is so pivotal over seven game series and being able to you know, get results in your favor because consistency wins and defense but, is part of the game. You know, you can't just and, uh, play offenses and expect to win. Like Clippers have beaten Dallas every game this year as well. So two games they've won by 15 Clippers and then only one game, the second time they played, they've beaten by three. So they've blown them out in two games. And, and in those two games, like, so what's Dallas average for, uh, Points per game. It's pretty high. I think it's like 117. They averaged, they scored 111, 107, and 99. So, yeah, the, the average points a game is, is high, man. Yeah, and, that, and those three games were below their team average because you're playing against a good defensive team. Like, and, and like I mean, we Dallas said, have man, the highest offensive rating of 117.5. Uh, yeah. Clippers are actually second to them at 140.6. Yeah. But, but on it's, the flip it's just side, the Clippers are a top five defensive team. That's the thing. Dallas <laughs> is 18 in the league in defense with a defensive rating of 112.53. So, um, and on the flip side, Clippers is top five defense in the league with a defensive rating of 108, meaning they are you know give up on average 108 points a game. So, man, they got like we said, they got some good players and. It's not just Doncic as well. Like Paul George needs to step up in this series too, yeah. man. I, I'm sick of him just flying under the radar. He needs to step up in this. I think he will. Like, but when you got a robot in your team in Kawhi Leonard, man, he's ice cold. Mister No Emotions. He doesn't care. He's literally an android. He gets out there. If he needs to butcher a team and ice like ice them off, he will do it when he has to do it. Like we said, he's Mister Get a Bucket in the NBA. If they're struggling, they'll just give him the ball and he'll just go to work. Like, we know how good this guy is. He willed the Toronto Raptors to a title last year. Like, come on. Mind you, he... he, he well, Paul he George is play. having a career year shooting the three-point No, ball. he is. No, he is. No, so no. He, but he, he's, he's playing well, but... Really yes. Long. I want to see these guys really... I want to see him progress. You know what I want to see, Dom? That's all I want to see. I love the NBA. I want the stars to progress. 
the leap between Dame Dollar and Paul George in the week. I want Paul George to come out in this series and and prove to us that he can be even mentioned in the same sentence as Dame Lillard. Even though he's I think not, he's, yeah, he, because at the even moment, though I think he's near far, 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 far off. That. Oh, he's a mile away from it. As much as everyone thinks, oh, Paul George, Paul George, Paul George. No, he's a mile away from it. From really, like, come on. And I don't want to like. I don't want to do it now because we have to go delve deep into it. But if I have to go delve deep into Paul George's career and compare it to Dame Willard, I tell you what, you're going to look like Paul George is some second rate player. And don't give yeah. me the whole had this freak accident and you know it's affected his game. He's come back, man. He's dominating. He's good. He's back to yeah. normal. Stop putting excuses. I mean, the guy's him. shooting a career year from three. Yeah, I his don't points want are down, to... but obviously he's on a team where he has to share the load with. Um, yeah, and why? like. It, yeah. Even his comments with like Booker hit the game winner and like Lillard last season hitting that game winner over your lucky shots and this and that. Like, come on. He needs to Don't stop talking excuses. smack and come to the playoffs and show us what he's made no. of. That's all I'm to say. You got to talk the talk, walk the walk. That's it. You do that, then I'll take you legitimately. Don't talk smack and then get owned and then be like, oh, yeah, but I, you know, it's a lucky shot. I don't want excuses. You're the one that talks shit. All like, right, Dommer. Summing it up, yeah, I've got Clippers in 4-2 and you've got Clippers at 4-1. 4-1 in 5. All right. Nice. Tuesday, I can't... Like, we cannot wait. This is going to be so good. I'm We're so fired up, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we thought we'd better get on here and run through the first react to give our opinions, who we think is going to win, uh, why we think they're going to win. The other thing as well, we'll mention uh, the ESPN bracket source. If you just want to let viewers know about uh, the submission no, to win the million bucks. Yeah, it's not ESPN. It's actually on the NBA, oh, the NBA. site. Um, it's NBA Pick'em. I'll put a link in the show description and show notes so that um, you can go on there and fill out a bracket. I mean, it's free to do. Make an account, fill out a bracket, potentially uh, win. It's a, it's a prize pool of $1 million. So obviously multiple people make it to the end. There's also a tiebreaker. Yeah. Um, which they make you fill out, that you get a share in that $1 million. If you're the only person to make it to the end with that well exact done. number on the tie bracket, you win the whole million. So it's free, ladies and gentlemen. You might as well go have in. A it's go. Been fun. Have a crack. Have a crack. Make you sure never you know. Oklahoma you might win a million bucks. Put Oklahoma in that be? What's that? Prove me wrong, Houston. Prove me wrong. <laughs> You're still going on about Houston. Go on, West Brick. Don't prove on. It. Please prove him wrong because my bracket, I've got Houston to win at 4-3. So uh, I'll be wrong. progressing to the next round and Dom will be straight out. I'll shut my mouth and sit here and not talk about Houston. Prove me wrong. Come on. I dare you. I dare you. Come on. Oh. Oh. All right, Very- ladies and gentlemen, we've kept this one to an hour, which is unlike us. We usually uh, bang on that two hours, so I'm happy. This is, makes my editing job a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, thanks again, ladies and gents, for tuning in. Uh, just keep living, loving, and breathing sport. Been double coverage. I've been Dom and with the big saucy. Peace, Peace out. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Always a pleasure. Tuesday, NBA playoffs. Let's get it. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcasting app. Also, if you could please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, that would be awesome. Don't forget to follow us on socials at DBL coverage underscore on both Instagram and Twitter to join in with your opinion.